What is an IUI, intrauterine insemination, and how does it help you get pregnant? Hi friends, I'm Dr. Natalie Crawford. I am a fertility doctor, and this channel is all about your fertility, your health, and your body, and things I want you to know. Now, I know a lot of you binge on this content when you find out you have infertility or you want to get pregnant. Some of you are watching before you get pregnant. You just want to know more about your body, and I love you all so much. I would love it if you subscribe. If you're new here, please stick around and please hit subscribe so that we can share our message with more people. We recently hit the 100,000 mark and I am so excited. In fact, YouTube even sent me a gift. I have to show you, I'll make a short about it. But this video is all about IUI. So what is IUI? It's intrauterine insemination. You may have heard of this in the past or like casually called artificial insemination or the turkey baster method. But essentially what an IUI is, is it is putting the sperm into the uterus. So this brings us to where does the sperm normally go? When you have intercourse, sperm is deposited in the vagina. The ejaculate is actually very important in this circumstance because it keeps the sperm protected in the acidity of the vagina. The vagina is very acidic and sperm and the ejaculate itself, the ejaculate is alkaline to help protect the sperm. The sperm swim out of that so quickly to get into the cervix, go into the uterus, and then get in the fallopian tube. And egg and sperm meet in the fallopian tube. That's where fertilization occurs. So fertilization occurs in the fallopian tube, and then early embryo development occurs over the next five to six days until an embryo reaches the inside of the uterus and where it can implant. So in principle, what IUI is, is taking the sperm and putting it inside the uterus. So I always say we're helping your players get further down the field, lining up the shot. However, you can't just take the like normal ejaculate and put it into the uterus. You would get an infection. There'd be this huge inflammatory response because all of the stuff that protects the sperm from the vagina does not belong in the uterus. The uterus is a very different environment. So when we do an IUI, what we do is we clean the sperm. So we take the sperm and it is what? washed or processed. And essentially what that means is you're removing all of the other material in the ejaculate and you're getting just a concentrated sample of the sperm. And then you're injecting that small volume into the uterus. If you put a bigger volume, like the size that was the entire ejaculate would be painful. And you'd have this big inflammatory infectious response. This is important because I've actually had patients do this where they have purchased unwashed sperm for home insemination. And then they've had somebody a friend who's a midwife or a nurse come and put a speculum in and put it into the uterus. And that is bad news bears. So we have to use the appropriate type of sperm if we're getting it from a sperm bank. So if you're buying it from a sperm bank, you want to make sure you're getting washed sperm or sperm appropriate for IUI intrauterine insemination. They actually do make vaginal insemination sperm and that's very different, right? As we just talked about. So you want to make sure you get the right type. In general, IUI can be used for a variety of different reasons and in a variety of different ways. So one of the ways that we do it is just in a natural cycle. This means you are a person who has regular ovulatory cycles and you can detect your ovulation, whether it is with an app or with ovulation kits or at a fertility clinic with an ultrasound, a trigger shot, some way we know exactly when you're ovulating. If you have irregular periods, this is not a good option for you because part of the natural cycle is the premise that the only piece missing is the sperm and now we're going to add the sperm and then you'll get pregnant. I also, before I like to do a natural cycle IUI because it costs money and because sperm costs money if you're buying donor sperm or because the process of the IUI costs money to make sure that we are in fact ovulatory and that we have normal anatomy, so a normal uterus and fallopian tubes. So I like some type of evaluation of the partner who is going to be carrying, which would include the uterus and the fallopian tubes. That can be a HSG, hysterosalpingogram, that's where you do the dye test under x-ray. It could be a FemView, which is a water bubble test, which we can do in the office. Some way we need to know that your uterus and your fallopian tubes are normal. So we would detect ovulation, typically use OPKs or ultrasound with trigger shots. 
the day that you're ovulating, you would then come into the office, the sperm sample would be cleaned, put into a small catheter, and that catheter would be placed through the cervix in the office into the uterus, and then sperm injected into the uterus. This typically takes minutes, should not be painful. You may feel discomfort from the speculum or the small catheter passing, but it shouldn't be painful. And then afterward, you're done. Now, you might feel some liquid leak out. It's typically from the water on the speculum mixing with that cervical fluid. It's not really the sperm. The sperm's not going to leak out once it's placed in the uterus. And then if you're doing a true natural cycle, you might just come in for the IUI and be done. That's it. So this can be done if there's problems having intercourse. Maybe there's difficulty with erection, ejaculation, or pain. Maybe there's no sperm. Either your partner has azoospermia or you're using donor sperm. Or this can be done for mild male factors and otherwise ovulatory patients. So maybe our motility is a little bit off and we're just helping the sperm by moving it closer to where it needs to be. If we have one of those things and we don't ovulate, then we might add on an ovulation induction agent these are typically medications like Clomid or Letrozole. When we do these medications, what we're trying to do is make sure that you're ovulating if you otherwise would not be. With these medications, you take them for typically five days. They're just pills you take by mouth. And then you'll come in either for ultrasound monitoring or you'll take ovulation kits. Once you've confirmed ovulation, everything else is the same. Then you get the insemination done and you carry on. A few things is that some of these medications can cause more than one follicle to develop. So most of us will watch with ultrasound and the goal number of follicles likely depends on your age and your diagnosis. So if you're PCOS and you're very young and you've never ovulated, I really want just one or two eggs. I don't need four. If you're 39, then I might tolerate more eggs because more of your eggs are going to be genetically abnormal as you get older. I, when I do these medications, like to do also progesterone after the fact. That's just because there's some evidence that in some people, if you induce ovulation, they might need a little luteal support. There's also evidence that meds like Clomid and Letrozole encourage a better corpus luteum. So there's no right or wrong, but luteal progesterone is overall easy and inexpensive. And so I like to add it on. So in a PCOS patient, who has no sperm using donor sperm or a mild male factor will use medications like letrozole you'll use it for five days come in for an ultrasound we will then use a trigger shot and then we'll do the iui the day you're ovulating and then you'll use progesterone and then we'll check a pregnancy test now the other use for iui can be for unexplained infertility remember unexplained infertility is when everything is normal normal uterus normal tubes you ovulate sperm is normal and you're still not getting pregnant. When you have unexplained infertility, you really fall into two different treatment groups. And I do have a whole video on that for you to get a deeper dive. But the idea here is we can either do IVF, which is overcoming a lot of factors, fertilization issues, timing issues, genetics. We kind of know a lot more with IVF. Or you can do the combination of super ovulation, purposefully making you ovulate more than one egg plus the IUI. So I like to think of this as having a bigger goal or more than one goals, and I'm taking my players and putting them further down the field. So now I'm increasing the odds that they can make the shot and that this can happen. When you do super ovulation plus IUI, you have your highest chance of success for the first three cycles. After that, most of us start to encourage you to move on to IVF. There are a subgroup of people who Ovulation plus IUI is not going to overcome your issue. And a great example is if there's a fertilization issue. If you've never been pregnant, you've never had a miscarriage, we might be concerned that egg and sperm have a hard time meeting inside the body. And no amount of putting the eggs and sperm close together potentially can overcome that. And that might be a case where fertilizing the eggs and sperm in the lab makes more sense. So we don't like you to just do treatment over and over again. There's other circumstances which may propel you in one direction to the other how old you are, how many kids you want, what your AMH is, genetics, if you carry a genetic disease. So we usually like to do a complete workup first before we guide you, but IUI can be used for absolute male factor, there's no sperm, for difficulty with intercourse, for a mild male factor, or for unexplained infertility. Overall, IUI is not going to ever exceed your natural conception rates. 
that's going to peak at about 20 to 25% per month in your 20s is going to drop to about 10 to 15% in your mid 30s and it'll be about 5 to 10% as you get in your upper 30s closer to 40. So we cannot overcome age with this treatment. The only thing that ever overcomes our natural chance of pregnancy is going to be IVF because that technology can improve upon what nature can do. IUI or other treatments, we're just trying to get you up to what you should be naturally. Hope this video helps you understand a little bit more about IUI and when we use it. As always, would love it if you would subscribe. You can also listen to the As A Woman podcast or follow along on Instagram at Natalie Crawford MD. Thanks.